UFC heavyweight champ Andre Arlovsky, he tends to the weeds. He waters the plants. He WD-40s the hinges. He does a great job at tending to the gate of the top 25 in the UFC's heavyweight division. And coming up this week, the Pitbull takes on Lord Kong, Dante Mays, who's now 9-5 and five with a no contest. The no contest, you ask? A split decision loss to Hamdi Abdel Wahab. He was a juicy boy, so it's an old contest now. But if you do consider it for Dante Mays, he got rushed a little bit in that fight against Hamdi. So then his last time out, he takes on a slip sliding away Augusto Sakai. And in that matchup, oh, Augusto Sakai showed why he was a former top 10 heavyweight. Sakai looked amazing. Going back and watching that fight this morning, I thought, huh, Dante Mays is like a plus 115. He's probably going to show up. Nope. Sakai closed the distance, pushed it up against the fence. When it was that distance, he was landing all the strikes he wanted to. And there wasn't much output back from Mays. And I thought to myself while I watched it, I went, geez, doesn't this guy have a judo base? Like, couldn't, shouldn't he be able to shuck out of some of these How bad positions? How often did we see people use judo in MMA, though? Wow. You would think for Dante Mays, a guy that's out of Jackson Wink MMA, look what happens if you can combine any sort of grappling and offensive takedowns. You can get up to the top 15. Shamil Durkimov did it. Jalton Almeida's doing it with his takedowns. They have way better it, back. Making it look easy. But for Mays, he strikes, he strikes, he strikes, and then occasionally he'll go for the takedown. Now, you saw it against Josh Priesen. When he was able to go out there and do the digital underground, a little bit of the Humpty dance. But by and large, for Mays, it's a lot of big actions when he's winning, pressing it up against the cage, threatening with some dirty boxing, back out at open space. He lands some of those big shots. He's a guy that fought three times on Contender Series. Once against Alan Crowder. He got finished. Twice. He ends up getting a win. Third time, he takes on former Chelsea goalkeeper Ricardo Prezel, and he ends up into the UFC to then lose. But if you do consider it overall... It's, it's most likely going to be the footwork and the outside movement boxing of a guy like Andre Arlovsky, who had won four in a row before he lost his last time out against a pretty darn good fighter, if you ask me, right? The only thing that I do worry about with Arlovsky at this stage of his career is how much longer is the output still going to be there? Because that's the thing that he has to be able to hold on to, right? It's weird. Normally, power is the last thing to go in heavyweights, and hell, Andre Arlovsky was a pretty damn powerful guy in his prime, but he has been able to shift his skill set very similar to like a CC Sabathia with the New York Yankees. CC won the Cy Young when he was younger, went to the Yankees, was good early, but then as his velocity got slower... Mixing those pitches. Exactly. He mixed his pitches. He became much more of, and this is just a very common term, the man was a baller. And for Andre Arlovsky, he does do a really good job at overwhelming his opponents, which is a wide variety of strikes. He's a guy who can throw the jab. He just puts a lot in your face. And I can't believe I'm comparing Aljamain Sterling, one of the best fighters in the world, to Andre Arlovsky currently, but you get the idea from a striking perspective. It's more volume over power at this stage of Arlovsky's career. He's going to put a lot in your face, and he's going to force you to be in more of a defensive shell so that you can't respond with your own big shots. Because Arlovsky... Let's just be honest, he doesn't have the greatest of chins. I know he hasn't been knocked out as of late, but we have seen when he gets hit clean, he does go I, down. I, now, he does do a good job of avoiding the clean shots. I think that is fair to say because he'll get wobbled in some fights, but he does a very intelligent job defensively. He'll shell up. He doesn't mind backing up to the cage. He'll put himself in a bit of a vulnerable position yeah. just to make sure he doesn't get knocked out. And that's pretty good if you don't lose the fight. If you look at his last two losses to Tom Aspinall, I mean, Mark Smith gave he Andre Arlovsky every single opportunity opportunity to stand it in the first round and he did and then in the second round you had a quick Aspinall takedown into a submission Arlovsky was definitely rocked in that first round when he got hit if you look at it, his last time out I say a really good fighter I'll, I buried the lead it's Marco Sergio de Lima who's gonna be taking on Derek Lewis on the main card of a pay-per-view coming up and Marcos rocks him drops him and then he ends up getting the submission win out of it so Arlovsky when it's been those types of fighters with a heavy, heavy power and big right hands, he struggled. But you look at the wins. Chase Sherman, Carlos Felipe, Jared Vandera, and then Jake Collier. I know I had said that the Jake Collier win was one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. But all of but his fights as of late have been very close win, lose, or draw. They have. The the big... Well, not those losses. No, they haven't been close. No, no, but you for the it. most part, even when Andre Arlovsky wins, you're sitting there thinking, okay, are they really going to give but, him this one? Yeah, there, there was a time, like the 2004-2005 range, where the he beats ball. Tim Sylvia for the interim heavyweight belt then he gets promoted to the overall undisputed heavyweight belt with a win over justin sellers and then a ufc 55 fury with craig hummer craig hummer was the broadcaster with joe Shoot rogan him. craig hummer 
In that one, neither one of them knew what happened against Paul Buenatello because he throws that short right hand that drops Buenatello, and then it's like, what happened? And it's very anticlimactic, climactic, as Joe Rogan said that night. So for Arlovsky, a lot of movement on the outside. For Dante Mays, a lot of those big actions to try and close the distance. Mays, for some stretch of the imagination, is favored to win this fight right now. If I have Arlovsky. I'll just let's let it look be at the topology right votes. I'm going to say over under 70% Arlovsky. I hope they're not that high because it'll make me regret just saying I have Arlovsky so confidently. I'm going to say under for the love of God. Oh, no. Oh, my oh, sweet no. goodness gracious. What is 1,427 re- total topology votes. 81% Andre Arlovsky. 83% by decision. I just get gaslit by the topology votes. I don't know what's real anymore. This is my big issue. If Andre Arlovsky is able to throw the leg kick and pitter-patter on the outside, he can win this fight by decision without a shatter of doubt in my mind because Mace doesn't necessarily have an answer for a lot of those kicks on the outside. If Arlovsky can just kind of blind him with a jab and the straight right, and I'm not even saying if they land, just blind him so he keeps his hands up and he's not throwing his own offense, I think Arlovsky can win this fight. That's why I do have him by decision. It's probably going to be a close one because that's where all of his fights have been as of late. But again, Andre Arlovsky from the age of 21 could get knocked out by one shot. The guy's 44. Like, how many professional athletes succeed until they're 45? Like, the wildest Randy part Johnson. of it is, he had all the success in the UFC. He leaves the UFC on a win. Fought he affliction. ends up fighting with affliction. He has a win over Ben Rothwell. He loses to Fedor. Oh. Then he goes to Strike Force, loses to Brett Rogers. Sergey Hartanov was the last win. The middle win, or, or sorry, they're all three losses. Brett Rogers, Bigfoot Silva, okay. and then Sergey Haritanov. Fights all over the world, comes back into the UFC, had that big losing streak. Then... Beat Brendan Shaw by split decision. <laughs> it's been close. You a b- beast of a fighter. But Matt, if you do consider it overall... Yeah. Are you with me on this? Are we picking a 44-year-old man to win a cage fight? When I say it like that, I don't have the confidence I did before. Yeah, I think it's going to end up being a really close fight, and I think that Dante Mays is going to clip Andre Orlovsky with something. I'll go with Dante Mays in the matchup. I don't like it. This is a chintzy little fight. We're split on the pick. Matt going with Andre Orlovsky, yet naturalized United States citizen. I'm going to go with Dante Mays in the matchup. Uh, yeah, let us know who you have down below in the comment section. Some big fights on this card, including Kai Car France taking on Amir Al-Bazi in the main event. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.